year one, year two, it's me, Mr. A, back with um, story time for another day. And uh, this one's going to be a two-parter, so I'll do part one today, part two tomorrow. And it is The Ugly Duckling, a classic fairy tale retold by Sally Grindley and illustrated by Bert Kitchen. All right, part one. Once upon a time, a mother duck sat on her nest amongst the tall reeds by the side of a river. All around her, the summer sun was ripening wheat in the fields, and on the river, families of ducks were already bobbing up and down. She wondered how much longer she would have to sit there alone, waiting for her eggs to hatch. At last, the eggs began to crack. First one, then another, then two, then another, then one more. Peep, peep, cried the ducklings as they stuck their heads out of their shells and looked around. Quack, quack. Their mother greeted them proudly and stood to look at her brood. But then she saw that one egg still lay in the nest, big and round and unbroken. Goodness gracious, how much longer must I wait for this egg to hatch? Are you sure it's not a turkey egg? said an old duck who happened to be waddling past. Certainly big enough. Take my advice and leave it there. You'll have no end of trouble teaching a turkey how to swim. The old duck waddled on. But the mother duck went back to sitting on the egg while her young ones toddled around beside her. At last, the big egg cracked. There was a loud, peep, peep, and the youngest duckling tumbled out. He was very big, and he wasn't at all like his brothers and sisters. His mother looked at him and wondered for a moment if the old duck had been right. Well, she was going to have to make him swim and prove her wrong. The next day, she took her ducklings down to the river's edge. One by one, they plunged into the water after her, bobbed to the surface and floated happily along, even the big duckling. Well, he can swim, said the mother duck, watching her youngest son swimming beautifully, even if he is a bit odd-looking. After their swim, she took her brood to the farmyard to introduce them to all the other birds who lived there. It was a noisy place, crowded with families of ducks and hens, many of them squabbling about who was best at this and who was worst at that. Quack, quack, said the mother duck, walking proudly along with her head held high. Now keep in line, waddle, don't walk, turn out your toes. Quack good morning to the other ducks, she ordered her ducklings. Nod your heads to the old duck over there, she's the most important fowl in these parts. Other ducks clamoured to watch the new arrivals. Here, look at this lot, they said. Look at that big, ugly one at the back. With that, one of the ducks ran over and bit the big duckling on the neck. Go away, he said. We don't want you here. Leave him alone, said the mother duck. He's not doing you any harm. He's big and he's ugly and he doesn't look like everyone else, replied the duck. He deserves to be bitten. Wow, harsh. The important old duck waddled over and complimented the mother on her brood. A good-looking bunch, all except that one, she remarked, pointing to the big duckling. He's quite the ugliest youngster I've ever seen. Wow, not a really nice place, this farmyard, is it? Not the kind of place I'd like to be. He may not be handsome, but he is very good-natured and he swims well. I'm sure his looks will improve as he gets older. He was in his egg too long, that's all. They made themselves at home, but the big duckling was pushed and shoved and bitten and laughed at all day and every day. The hen snapped, you're too big. The duck snapped, you're too clumsy. The turkey snapped, we don't want you. Even his brothers and sisters snapped. We hope the cat gets you, you ugly great thing. The poor duckling had no friends and grew more and more unhappy. How I wish I wasn't so ugly, he said to himself over and over again, when even his mother, in a moment of despair, said, hmm, perhaps it would have been better if you hadn't been born. He could bear it no longer. Even his mother said that. Oh, oh my word. Oh. The ugly duckling ran away. He ran and ran until he came to a great stretch of marshland. Too tired and miserable to go any further, he lay his head on his wings and fell into an unhappy sleep. In the morning, he was woken by a family of wild ducks who said that he could stay but only if he kept right away from them. Wild geese lived there as well and the ugly duckling cheered up when two young ones were friendly to him. But two days later, shots rang out and the young geese fell down dead among the reeds. Now there was gunfire everywhere. Blue smoke billowed around, and the shouts of hunters cut across the hysterical squawking and flapping of wings as wild geese and ducks tried to escape. Hounds came splashing through the mud, crashing through the reeds, barking and howling. 
The poor duckling was terrified. He stood quivering among the reeds and was about to tuck his head under his wing to hide when a dog's face appeared inches from him. Its red tongue was hanging out and it snarled and bared its sharp white teeth. But then suddenly it ran off without even touching him. Thank goodness, sighed the duckling. I'm so ugly, even the dog has run away from me. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I'll come back with part two tomorrow. Part two, which I hope is a lot more positive than part one. What a horrible place this duckling is in. With all these other animals being so horrible to it just because of the way it looks. <sighs> right, let's hope things improve in part two. And I'll be back for that tomorrow. Take care, everybody, and have a great day. Bye-bye.